Hello students, welcome to the online series of Gopal Swami PU College. In today's session of second PU online classes, let us discuss about the project oriented questions of the part A that is microeconomics. In microeconomics, in this current year, you have four lessons. Among these four lessons, the second lesson that is theory of consumer behavior, the third lesson that is production and costs and the fourth lesson that is the theory of a firm under perfect competition. All these three lessons have one project oriented question each. So, in microeconomics, there are totally three project oriented questions. In this, let us discuss about the first one that is the question that is in the second lesson of microeconomics that is theory of consumer behavior. You all know that is the consumer behavior is studied in a market because it varies according to the trends of market. The consumers demands also vary according to the prices of the products. So, consumer behaves according to the market variations. In this project oriented question, you are asked to know about the reflexes of the consumer according to his income and according to the availability of the product and their prices. So, in this theory of consumer behavior lesson, you have learnt about two important concepts that is the budget line and budget set. Budget line is a line is a graphical representation of the purchase of the possibility of two goods that can be purchased by a consumer within the available income. How does he make a choice among the available goods? Because he wants to satisfy his demand. So, you all know that the wants are unlimited and the resources to satisfy these wants are limited. As the wants are unlimited and the resources are limited, he has to make an option. That is the problem of choice. As the resources of an economy are scarce, there arises the problem of choice. Therefore, here the consumer has a confusion as to whether to spend the money, entire income on any one product or on the other product also or if we buy any one of the product among the two products given in this problem, will he has to sacrifice or will he have to give up the desire for another product. So, now let us discuss about this problem. That is, the problem is asked like this. In this problem, a consumer wants to consume two goods. Among these two goods, the price of banana is rupees 4 and the price of mango is rupees 5. So, the consumer's income is rupees 20. In this problem, it is given to you that there are two products available for that consumer to satisfy his demands. The first one is banana and the second one is mango. So, he has to satisfy his desire by buying these two products and his income is rupees 20. So, this limited income of rupees 20 should make him to satisfy both the goods. Therefore, the questions are asked like this. It is a 5 marks question. This is a 5 marks question and you have to answer to all the 5 questions that are asked. Let us see about the first question. The first question is how much bananas can he or she, here they have given as she, how much bananas can she consume if she spends her entire income on that good. Her entire income is rupees 20 only. So, if she spends her entire income on that particular good that is banana, how much she can consume? We can see that, that the income of this person is rupees 20 only and she has to satisfy, she wants to consume bananas. So, the cost of one banana is rupees 4. That is the price of one banana is rupees 4. If she wants to spend her entire income on that good only, that is banana only, then she may get 
this for five. So she may get five bananas because the price of one banana is rupees four, and she has rupees twenty with her, and with twenty rupees she can buy five bananas and satisfy her demand. The second question is how much mangoes can she consume if she spends her income on that good her entire income on that good so the cost or the price of one mango is rupees 5 so she her income is rupees 20 so 20 divided by 5 that is 4 if she buys 4 mangoes as 5 rupees per mango she can buy 4 mangoes and out of her entire income of rupees 20 she is able to buy 4 mangoes in the case of banana she is able to buy 5 bananas with her entire income in the case of mango she is able Able to buy four mangoes with her entire income. So the third question is, is the slope of the budget line downward or upward? As you all know, budget line is a graphical presentation of the possibility of two goods that can be bought within the available income. Here, the slope of the budget line is downward because it is satisfying her demand with her available income. She is able to buy both the goods or she is able to buy any one of the goods if she is prepared to give up another good and with her entire income she is capable to satisfy the demand so her budget and her demand is matching so therefore it is downward the budget line is down, sloping downward the next one is are the bundles on the budget line equal to the consumers income or not the bundles are the combination of two goods so the bundles the combination of two goods are equal to her income or not it is equal to her income only if she wishes she can buy both the goods both mangoes as well as bananas or if she doesn't wish to have one product then she can go for only one product it is either banana or mango the next one is if you want to have more of bananas you have to give up mangoes give up means sacrifice so is it true in this case yes it is true if she wants to have more of bananas she has to sacrifice mangoes or if she has to have more of bananas then obviously she has to sacrifice the mangoes and if she wants to have more of mangoes then obviously she has to sacrifice the need of bananas or the desire for bananas so the behavior of a consumer is studied through these five questions that is the consumer goes to market with an intention of buying all the goods that satisfies his or her demands but the variations of the price in the market are different prices of the products in the market are different to her expected rate so then what happens there will be a mismatch with the rate or the prices of the goods and her budget so when she enters the market the decisions may change before leaving the home she or he think of buying so and so product as they may be available at so and so price but when they enter to the market the situation may change and as per the prices of the products their buying decisions will also change so in this theory of consumer behavior lesson we have studied about the behavior of a consumer according to the products prices so his budget should suit to the prices of the products also and if they are suitable then only the consumer is willing to buy all the products or the combination of two products which he or she has planned to buy otherwise she may have to give up one of the product to satisfy the demand or desire of another product so every time there is either a compromise with the desires or the sacrifice with the desires because with the available income it is very difficult to buy all the combination of the goods that he or she has planned to purchase so uh, this uh, the consumer behavior always is accompanied with both compromise and sacrifices so this is clearly explained in this 
problem now let's move towards another project oriented question and that is in the third lesson that is production and costs the sum will be like this the question is find the missing products in the following table the project oriented question of the third lesson that is production and costs is like this all the project oriented questions are of 5 marks so you can easily score 5 marks out of these project oriented questions the question of third lesson that is production and costs is like this that is find the missing products in the following table they will give you one table like this and they will ask you to find the missing values you all know that tp is total product mp is marginal product and ap is average product so we have to calculate the total products marginal products values and the average products which are missing in this table so they have already given some values of all the three total product marginal product and the average product so whichever is missing we have to fill it the total amount of product is the volume of the products that are produced marginal product is the change in output that is any additional output is made and that addition is known as marginal product and average product is the output per unit by the name itself you can understand average is the per unit output so now let us calculate the missing values so here the total volume of product in the first factor is that is 10 since we don't know the previous value it is the same in the case of marginal product also it is the same so the value of the marginal product is 10 the next one is the marginal product is the change in the output so you can see a change in this output so this change in output is 14 that is here 24 is there 24 minus 10 is 14 so how did you obtain this 10 minus 0 is 10 because we don't know the previous value it is 10 only and here also it is 10 only and in the next case 24 is given as total product and you are asked to calculate the marginal product so marginal product is any addition made in the output that is any change made in the output so 24 minus 10 is 14 so now here they have asked about both total product and average product they have given only marginal product so you know that the marginal product is the change made in the output so 40 plus 10 is 50 and here also 50 plus 6 becomes 56 so the previous existing or total product plus the change in the total product the previous is 50 and the change is 6 therefore it is 56 so now let us come to the average product the only one missing value that is asked in this table of average product is this one so 50 is divided by 4 the number of factors 50 divided by the number of units that is 50 divided by 4 is 12.5 so the average product that is missing in this table that is the only average product that is missing in this table is 12.5 that is 50 divided by 4 so if you give the answer of these 5 missing values easily you can score 5 marks they will ask you to give only 5 missing values and it is very easy to calculate these missing values if you know the relationship between the total product marginal product and the average product i will once again explain you about how did we derive this how did we come to this values once again you understand about how did we arrive to these values which are missing in this table the first one is 10 minus 0 is 10 because we don't know the previous value you cannot we don't know the change in the output so we don't know the value of the marginal 
product therefore it is the same that is here also it is 10 and we have written 10 here also and in the next case we know about the change in the product that is change in the output that is 24 so 14 addition is made 14 products are added to the previous one so 24 minus 10 is 14 next one is 50 is they have given this as the missing value so they have asked you to find this missing value so 40 is the total product and 10 was given in the table itself and 10 is the change made in the total output that is 10 is a marginal product so 40 plus 10 is 50 likewise 50 plus 6 is 56 and finally they have asked only one average product the missing value of only one average product was asked in this table and that is 50 divided by 4 because average is a per unit value so 50 divided by 4 is 12.5 so you can easily score 5 marks if you understand this and the same question will be asked in the examination in the theory of consumer behavior you learnt about the problem of bananas and mangoes and here you learnt about the missing calculation of missing values in the table that is uh, in the table of uh, total product average product and marginal product in the fourth lesson of microeconomics that is theory of a firm under perfect competition there is one more project oriented question the question is like this that is compute the total revenue marginal revenue and the average revenue schedules in the following table when market price of each unit of goods is rupees 10 when the market price of each unit of goods is rupees 10 so they have just asked you to compute the total revenue marginal revenue and average revenue with the market price of each unit of goods with rupees 10 so then we have to draw a table like this and after that we have to calculate the total revenue marginal revenue and the average revenue in the third lesson they have given some values of total product marginal product and the average product and they have asked you to fill the missing values wherein here you have to prepare your own table of these total revenue marginal revenue and average revenue and you have to calculate with the values of the goods when the market price of each goods is rupees 10 so now let us see how it is we have to calculate this that is the total revenue marginal revenue and the average revenue total revenue is the total volume of the revenue that the firm has collected marginal revenue is the change in the revenue and average revenue is the revenue per unit so they have just given the value of the price of the unit of goods that is rupees 10 so we have to calculate from the beginning that is from zero since in zero it is completely zero because we don't know the values of the previous one also and the value of the quantity sold is and the quantity sold is zero only and therefore total revenue is also zero marginal revenue is also zero and average revenue is also zero the next one is the quantity of the goods sold is one so 10 because they have given the price of the good is 10 so 10 into 1 is 10 so marginal revenue is 10 minus 0 because we don't know the previous value and we don't know about the change also so 10 minus 0 is 10 only and average revenue is 10 divided by 1 that is 10 only the next one is the quantity when the quantity of goods sold is 2 so the total revenue is 10 into 2 that is 20 this 10 is given in the sum itself 10 into 2 equals 20 so 20 minus the previous one 20 minus the previous one that is 20 minus 10 is 10 only so 20 divided by 2 is 10 that is 2 tens are 20 so 2 tens are we get 20 so this 10 is obtained like this 20 20 divided by 2 is 10 30 divided by 3 is 10 40 divided by 4 is 10 and 50 divided by 5 is 10 
so we were learning about total revenue that is price of the good is the same it is given in the sum it is 10 only so when the quantity 1 when the quantity of goods sold is 1 10 into 1 is 10 and 10 into 2 is 20 10 into 3 is 30 10 into 4 is 40 and 10 into 5 is 50 when we come to the marginal revenue that is the change in the revenue 20 minus 10 is 10 30 minus 20 is 10 40 minus 30 is 10 50 minus 40 is again 10 then we come to the average that is the per unit revenue that is 20 divided by 2 the value that is given the quantity of goods sold is 2 only so this 20 divided by 2 is 10 30 divided by 3 is 10, 40 divided by 4 is again 10 and 50 divided by 5 is again 10. So with this we can easily score 5 marks. You know you all know about the relationship of total revenue, marginal revenue and the average revenue. So if you know about the relationship of these three you can easily score 5 marks.